Hey guys, today I thought I would uh, make a short little video to show you how I black base. This is something I've been meaning to do for a while. One of the things I noticed with a lot of people doing it for the first time or not really uh, understanding it, and, and not that it's necessarily wrong, but I think that that the best way to do it is to have as tight a pattern as possible. Now, as you know, it, we've said before that the the human brain isn't really capable of reproducing random, but I really don't think you you have to be random. If you uh, the the way I do it, uh, it, it creates enough of a of a pattern to, to where when you blend it in, it, it looks random enough, and when you come back with oils and other weathering, it you're not going to notice that it was. Um, that it was any, it's not going to look like anything intentional. Uh, so I do do the black basing a little bit different. Um, with the MIG here on the under color, on the other underside, I'm just going to go with the straight uh, light gray color, and I'm using MRP of course. Uh, it's MRP 91. Uh, <clears throat> there's not going to be a lot of chipping on the underside, so I haven't done any aluminum or anything. Uh, there will be chipping along the leading edge, so that's why I'm not painted. I'm not going to. Uh, paint the leading edge of this uh, until I come back and do do the metallic so I can uh, chip with that. On the flip side, on the top side, the camo colors are going to have other colors um, built in and worked in. Uh, but with the bottom, I'm just going to go with the straight gray and then I'm going to get everything else with oils uh, after that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a little bit of the panel. I'm not going to do the whole wing. Uh, this is uh, the way I do it. It's uh, even more time consuming than probably uh, the way some of you are doing it, um, how long it takes doesn't really matter to me. Uh, it's the result I'm after, but I'm just going to talk you through the process a little bit. Um, <clears throat> my compressor may kick on. Uh, hopefully it won't be uh, too loud. If it is in, in edit, I'll, uh, I'll um, take care of that uh, in, in post. Um, but my new compressor kicks on a little more often than my old one, so it's definitely going to kick on while I'm doing this. But I'm just going to talk you through, I'll probably do about half the wing here, uh, and, and talk you through how I do it. Now, uh, the airbrush I'm using is the Renegade Chrome with the, with the fine uh, needle in it. Um, I'm not sure what the size is, I think it might be a .2, but it's the fine, it's the same internals as the Sotar. I just, I just prefer the Chrome for some reason. Um... The Sotar is nice. I have it, and I, I use it as well, but but generally, even for the detail work, I just stick with the chrome. So this paint's been sitting here a while, uh, so I'm just going to blow a little bit out here just to make sure I don't have any gunky stuff. Now, the first thing I do is I'm going to get really tight, and it, this color has not been thin. Sometimes some MRPs need a little drop of um, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner because they'll spit a little bit. Uh, this one hasn't been giving me that problem. Um, but if it does, I'll, if, if it does start, I'll, I'll drop a dot in there. So I get really close and I just, I mean, really, really close. And then I just start doing tight stuff like this. Now it may be hard to see. You may be not see, not be able to see around the airbrush, but just really, really tight stuff like this. But I don't want to get too too much coverage I'm, I'm leaving parts of the black like I said it doesn't have to be random and when you do this you're gonna see you're gonna get little eyes like that uh, because you're really close but they're not spidering or anything if they start to spider you have a problem uh, but as long well they're like that they're not really a problem um, that's just a, a product of how I'm moving the airbrush when I come to a stop here and then move this way it stops kind of a second there and builds up and you can try to avoid that but I've just found it's really not necessary because it kind of helps add to it anyway. So, like I said, this isn't random at all. Okay, there's the compressor. I don't know if you can hear me talking over the compressor, so I'm not going to say anything important. Wow, it seemed like it ran longer than usual that time. Probably knew I was talking. 
I didn't like how it was starting to build up, uh, get a little too heavy there. So sometimes I'll just step back and readjust. That means I'm getting a little too comfortable and not moving around enough. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this, and, and I'm going to do probably up to half the wing, uh, and I'll just um, fast, you know, make that fast. So I'm not going to stop talking now, and I'm going to do up to half the wing. I'll speed up the video if I have to, and then I'll come back and, and tell you what's happening. <laughs> Okay, so I've done this part of the wing here. Uh, like I said, I'm avoiding the the, tray, the leading edge there because I'm going to chip that, so uh, that's going to be a little, little bit different process. Uh, I figured I'd just do this much for the sake of the video. Now, this is the first round of marbling, and you're probably thinking, first round, wait a minute. Um, a lot of you would be tempted to go back and, and start blending this just with a, a, lighter, a lighter layer from further away uh, to, to blend it in. Uh, that's not what I do. Uh, once I get the first marble layer down, and this this is a little wonky because I've done the whole wing, other wing, and my hand's starting to cramp pretty bad. But um, uh, what I what I do now is is now that I have the first layer of marbling done, I'm going to go back and marble more. Uh, what I'm going to do now, though, is I'm specifically going to focus on certain areas, and those areas are the darker areas showing through. The darker black parts that are showing through, I'm going to go over. And what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to step up the opacity with this, this round. Uh, I'm going to pull a little bit further back on the trigger, put more paint down. And when I'm going over these darker, blacker spots, that part is going to, is going to be uh, uh, more opaque than the layer that's already on there. And that's going to create uh, a second layer of marbling. And it's, it's going to, what it does is it, it makes it look even more random, even though it's not random. It's just going to make it look... Um, more uniform uh, and and more put together. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Make sure I have paint. Uh, it's starting to separate a little bit. So when it starts to brown up, uh, get a little darker at the top, it's because it's uh, starting to settle. I usually just get a pipette and mix it that way, and it's back to it's back to uh, to working well. So again, I'm going to start like in the darker black areas, and you'll see me. I'm going to start going over those with an even more opaque setting, if you will. I really am trying to avoid the, the darker gray areas from the first round. Over here it got kind of kind of ugly because I got to be honest my hands starting to cramp this isn't this isn't the easiest way to paint but I do feel that it's the best way to get a good subtle variation in the color and one thing you could do is if you want to use different colors is this second marble coat you can come back with a slightly darker color even and work in over the gr darker parts I've done that and it works it works great really on the bottom here it looks like from the photos I'm looking at that most of the stuff I'm going to want to replicate just be easier with oils and trying to work it in with paint and maybe when I do the the um, fluid leaking from the engine area there that might require to work some browns into the base. Now I turn my compressor off, so if it runs out of air, 
I'll just do some magic editing while I pump it back up because I didn't want it to have to talk over it. Again, you can see I'm just going over the darker gray black parts. I'll try to turn the airbrush to the side there while I get this part here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Just over the darker black parts. parts. And another thing I'll add is, let's see, I didn't even marble over this. I, I Details like this where it's really going to be really easy to, to screw up and not get full paint coverage. I don't bother black basing those because, you know, just a little area like that, you're not going to miss the subtle variation. I'd much rather make sure that I don't come back at the end of the build and notice that I didn't marble it in or blend it in all the way and that would really irritate me so i just uh fully paint over that now see here's a little darker spot shining through i'm just going to come in and you don't want to do them all the way you see how <clears throat> Let's look at this little area right here, this circle right here. Let's see, I'll get something to point at it with. <clears throat> right in there, this little little area. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to start getting the darker parts. But see, I'm putting more paint down so it's much brighter, but I'm, I'm not covering it all. It's creating a second layer of marbling over the first layer because you're going more opaque, darker, darker with the paint. There's an airplane. My window's open, so I don't get too high off these paint fumes here. But there's an airplane and a woodpecker out there, I think. I don't know what the fuck that is, but it's driving me nuts. Okay, I'm out of air, so I'm going to turn the compressor back on. Okay, stupid compressor has done me stupid. So now I've, I've gone back and uh, I've done all the marbling I want to do over the darker parts. Like I said, you don't want to do them all. You want to leave some. Uh, well, what you end up with is new darker parts. And uh, just depending on how how dark, how dark opaque you make the paint, you could probably go back and you know step it up another notch. And just keep keep at it. I don't know. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the the layering, and I don't thin the paint down any more than it already is out of the bottle or anything like that. I just back up. I back up and I pull the trigger back more, and you can faintly start to see it. And I don't just sweep back and forth. I also make it kind of random. Some parts are going to need heavier, so I don't try to do the whole thing at one time. I, you know, moving up. And generally, I would have done the whole wing, like the first marble layer, then the second marble layer, and then come back and blend. But <clears throat> for the sake of time. Okay, again, I'm just going to speed this up um, for the sake of the compressor. Uh, I just switched it back on. For the sake of the compressor, I'm going to speed up the rest of the blending, and uh, I'll be back with you when I'm done. Okay, so... Um, that's about what I'm going to do right now. Now, eventually, once I get the whole wing done, um, it's kind of hard to tell when you have, you know, start black right next to right next to it. Uh, once you get the whole wing done, it's a little easier to see if it's blended enough. I'll switch around to the other wing here that I previously already done. Whoa, there you go. Uh, I'm running out of room here. 
but I've already done this wing. I've blended it in. Um, and, and so far it, it, it looks okay. I'm happy with it, but, uh, it's just going to depend once I get the whole underside done, uh, it'll be a question of whether I, I feel like I need to come back. Uh, I see a couple spots actually that I think need to be blended more. It's very subtle. You're going for very subtle here. You don't want very stark. I found, um, uh, you know, I don't know what much else to say. Um, like I said, I think the, the trick to getting really good, uh, the, the really good marbling and the, and the really tight and subtle definition is, is just to come in really tight with the marbling. I see some people look, I'll show you over here. Let's switch back to this wing. I see a lot of, of, of what looks like people are, are doing this. You know, I see a lot of this from people that are just starting or trying it for the first time. And yeah, that just looks, once you, once you start blending that in, it's just not as, it's not as diffuse. It, it's not as subtle. It's, it's a lot more stark, uh, unless you blend it in too much and then you don't see anything at all. But that's not what you want. You want to be in tight or it, in my opinion, you want to be in tight, you want to do tight, 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 tight marbling like that. And really, it's just a matter of having the right paint and the right airbrush. I mean, Mr. Paint does this beautifully. Mr. Paint does this beautifully, I think, um, straight out of the bottle. Uh, every once in a while, you'll have to put a little bit of thinner, but you really shouldn't shouldn't need to. And I I can even do this with a with a larger airbrush, um, pretty well. My, I have a th a point three five Iwata that that'll pretty much do do it almost as well. And it's just a just by virtue of the the paint itself. Uh, but any lacquer you can. Um, a lot of them don't come pre-thin, pre but any lacquer, uh, the AK real colors work really well if you thin them down. Uh, Mr. Color, Tamiya, the, uh, those type paints will we'll all do this uh, with pretty much ease. But the, the biggest reason I like Mr. Paint is because I don't have to thin it. And I'm lazy. So, uh, with that, I'm going to stop talking and I'm, I think I'm going to just... Uh, video and, and finish the this half of the wing off and just um, you know uh, speed it up and let you watch if you want to or if not you can stop there you've seen everything you need to need to see I don't think I'm gonna say much more else about it I'm just gonna just gonna go ahead and do it for the sake of showing you <laughs>